Hey everyone, I'm Shane Beerwith with Modus Games. We're here in Helsinki, Finland, meeting with Frozenbyte, one of the largest independent game developers in the country and creators of the beloved Trine series. We're here to talk about life as a game developer, some of the challenges that they face, and advice that they have to give to up and coming game creators. Let's go take a look. How many hours of daylight do you get in Finland? In the winter in Helsinki, not that much. What, it rises at 9 a.m., sets at around 3 p.m., something like that? Yes, something like yeah, that yeah, right sure. now. Yeah. How do you guys deal with the lack of sunlight? I don't know. Work. Yeah. You work? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, tell me a little bit about game development culture in Finland. Is it a, is it a big market here in Finland? We do have uh, quite a lot of developers. Many of them are, are in, in the mobile space, but we, we do have like pretty good roots in the, in, the, in the console and PC space as well. And, and we've been in the business now for 17 years. What about the, the Finnish government? Do you guys uh, get any subsidizing? The Finnish government actually like does help uh, quite a bit. Back in 2004, when we still had no game released, we actually got, got support from, from Business Finland, uh, or, or Tekes as it was called back then. It was the first, first people outside of our company that actually believed in what we were doing. Right. So that mental thing yeah. was huge. Yeah. And that's also when we were able to pay like the first salaries to people. So of course, okay, job. there was a money money thing also, but like yeah. like the mental mental side was probably the biggest one. Because game development sometimes you can be developing a game for like two years straight, sort of like locked in a in a dungeon. Yeah. And no, nobody nobody sees it, nobody nobody hears about it and, and you just don't have no idea if people will like it. So if you were to tell some indie devs in that situation right now where it's been a year and a half and they're just, they're grinding, they're grinding making their game, what is the thing that you would tell them don't to keep them up. going? Don't give up. That's finish the finish the projects. That's yeah. something yeah. that I would say maybe. Yeah, I, and the one, one thing not to do is to like, like scrap one project and start a new one. But like generally, you get the most experience from the last 10% of the project. So sticking with this theme of, of self-doubt, you know, obviously indie development is incredibly difficult to, uh, you know, to, to sustain and, and make, make a living, essentially. Um, what was one of the most difficult experiences you have had as an indie developer? Just Oh, wow. In general. There's been a few over the years. <laughs> but yeah, like most recently, Trine Tree, that's been, uh, that was pretty difficult. Because we were, we were all pumped up when we were uh, going into early access. And then, uh, then when we kind of failed with, uh, with the expectations of the, of the fans and players, it was like, uh, it was a bit of a, bit of a blow in the face. Like we, we we really took it quite hard. How did you handle, I guess, the community fallout from that? Like, you know, because again, that's a very personal yeah, thing. How do, you, yeah. how do you deal with community with something that's so personal? Because you don't, you don't want to go on attack mode, right? No, no. Like, you can't lash out at the players because basically they are always right in the end. Where does the Frozen Bite team find creative inspiration? Like, how do you guys, how do you guys manage your creative process. We, we rely on the people. People, people are creating when, when given chance. One of the things we, we did, did kind of have a little bit of a process. A um, uh, writer was kind of running around the office before she started writing Try and Force. She, she went around asking everybody like uh, put some kind of idea of something you want to see in Try and For um, because she was like coming up with a story. So she was asking people what they want to see uh, in the story. And that, that's how you end up with the badgers and the seal and uh, things like that in the games. How do you get noticed? How do you, how do you survive in this, this current day climate? On top of you know, tuning up your Steam, the store page, you can use the, the moving images and all, all kinds of 
um, things to make it more interesting, but you have to have some kind of uh, outside of Steam marketing stuff to draw people into the page. Is tea more popular in Finland than coffee? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> no, it's no, no, no. Yeah, think, it's just us. I think Finnish people are the number one coffee drinkers yeah. in the world. Yeah. Has Frozen Byte ever hired anyone from uh, that has had experience in like a game, game development school, or do you think that there's value to that? Yeah, we, we actually have. Uh, like it's actually a pretty big thing for us to hire new people in general, and uh, one of the ways uh, that we get new people is from uh, these game uh, schools, basically. We actually have these sort of excursion days where people from uh, from one school come come over to the company, like 12, 15 people at a time. And we just present the company and, and uh, tell them a bit about us, and they they get a chance to like uh, see our games, meet our people, and interact with the, with the devs, and perhaps see see how they can improve uh, like uh, their own stuff. When you're interviewing for one of these positions, do you have like a, a creative take-home test or something like that? Yeah, we usually have some kind of test assignment for the uh, people who are applying because. Even if the portfolio is very good, it's ne not necessarily like exactly the thing that we want to test. So even then we can still send some kind of test assignment. For QA we need a list of all the games they played on Steam and how much they've completed. <laughs> <laughs> playing games is, is a good way to get into QA. Yeah. Yeah. And especially like not only playing games but breaking games. Like, like the funny things, like like just doing stuff that breaks the game. Obviously, there's a lot of a lot of kids out there, a lot of people out there who really want nothing more than to get into this industry. And what would be your advice to them getting into the industry, um, you know, from the ground up? Do something that has a relevance to what you want to do in games. So if you want to be like an artist or um, programmer, then you do some kind of groundwork to you know, advance that instead of just like, oh, I played a lot of games. Potential and passion. I mean, those are those are the really the two things, two main things. So uh, obviously, usually if you are passionate, you will have done stuff. You will have created a portfolio, for example, that yeah. Is, is, is looking good. I don't. I don't think it's ever gonna be enough to just attend a school. Right. You. You really have to have. Uh, you have to care. You yeah. have to really care yeah, about. You what have you're to doing. want to want to do it. Well, that's all we've got for now. If you have any questions you'd like us to answer in future episodes, hit us up in the comments section. We'll see you next time.